here, I'm going to talk about the new sequence function for Excel. It is an amazing function that on its own might not seem that great, but combined with other functions and formulas allows you to do really great stuff in Excel. So we'll start off with building lists and tables of numbers and then combine them with other formulas over here for dates, part numbers, all sorts of really cool things. And this is part of my premium course on TeachExcel.com, so check the description of this video for more information on that. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. So for our first set of examples, we are going to use sequence in its most basic form and make a sequence of numbers. And let us zoom in and check it out. So this is the function in its most basic form sequence and then you put a number and it's going to give you some rows of numbers incremented by one but let us go over here delete this guy and start from scratch equals sequence see it there it is a function for the new versions of Excel and it says returns a sequence of numbers and you have four arguments three of them are optional rows columns start and step but like I said, if you want to use it in its basic form, you just put a simple single number right there, whatever you want, and it'll fill it in. So one row for one. You want two rows of numbers incremented by one, two. However many you want, 5, 10, 15, 20, put that number in there, and you get it like that. So in its basic form, it gives you a list of numbers incremented by one starting at one. And as you see here, it spills the results down into empty cells below it. Remember, there will be no value here because this is a dynamic array formula that will spill the values. In fact, what's kind of neat is if you open it up here and you select it and hit F9 right now, you will see that it calculates into an array in the cell. So this is what it actually returns. And then the new version of Excel just translates that and puts it in the cells below it. But now let us go ahead and build a table and make something a little bit more interesting. So we are going to use one of the other arguments equals sequence. Now, how many rows do we want? Let's go with 10. And this time, let's add some columns. Let's start with two columns. By default, it is one. So if I put one right here, it would be just like it was before. And now let's go ahead and put, say, five. And we get it like that. How cool is that? And notice that it now counts from left to right. So one, two, three, four, five. Then it resets on the next row and goes like that. So it does change, whereas here it starts from the top row and then counts down for obvious reasons because there are no columns. Here it sort of transposes that and goes left to right. So it doesn't go up to down. And let us just leave it at a nice, big, lovely table. Now, before I continue on the tutorial, one thing I do want to show you, because you will use it a lot, is how to freeze these values. So if you're using sequence, you want to create a list of values. You probably want to do something with them other than just access them from other formulas. So if I go and type in here, it's still empty. Someone could still go there and type that and mess up everything. And that's not what you want. So we'll delete that. And to freeze this, click anywhere in this table as if it was a regular table of data. Hit Control A to select all of it. Notice it's all selected now. And we're going to copy paste special values. So Control C to copy it. Alt E S V. Enter. Now we get the values that we see. And there is no formula over here. So now nothing is spilled. We have a nice neat table of numbers and we can do whatever we want with it. We don't have to worry about someone coming down here thinking it's empty after they double click it and typing something into it. I'm going to back that up so we have our nice neat formula. There we go. And you could get to copy paste special values by right clicking. So if you copy this, then go somewhere else, right click. You have a paste and a paste special option. You can do it from there. All right. That's not the focus of this tutorial. So let us move on to variations. Let's say that we want to change the starting number. So 20 to 29 equals sequence. 
rows, let's go with 10 columns, one, or you could just skip over it if you wanted to, like that. And let's say for a start, start at 20. 20 to 29. Now, sometimes it does freak people out a little bit if you leave an argument like that, where it's just comma, comma. So we'll go ahead and put a one in there. That might make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Or more important, the next person that sees it will be a little bit more comfortable so they won't mess up your formula. All right, now let us change the increment value. Equals sequence. Let's go with 10 rows, one column for start. Leave it blank or put in a one. We'll put in the one for now. And let's say step 10. So now we have all four arguments. And there we go. Now let's make it a bit more useful and change the starting value from one to something else. So go here, let's say equals sequence rows, 10 columns, one start. Let's make it zero and step 10, zero to 90. Or if you wanted to, go ahead and put 10 for that, 10 to 100. I know these examples are kind of basic. Don't worry, we're getting to the good stuff. All right, now let's do a countdown table. So your step value can be negative. So equals sequence rows 10 columns 1. What do you want to start at? You want to start at 100, 90? Let's start at 10 for now. Step value, this time we want to go down. So we put a negative 1. 10 to 1. Perfect. Now you want that to go negative? Well, let us up our step value to minus 5, and we go negative. So you're not limited to only showing positive numbers. And for the countdown table, pretty much just the same. 10 rows, 10 columns, start at 100, go down by 1. Make it negative if you need to. You can do pretty much whatever you want to do with this. Now, once you get your sequence of numbers, you're going to want to do something useful, not just, not just make lists of numbers. So let us go here to combine the formulas. Now, a lot of examples will show you how to make dates really quickly and nicely. So I'll show you those examples first. They're kind of neat. And then we'll get to making or incrementing a more difficult value like this one over here. So let us start with a date. And this is what we're going to get to. Now, don't freak out. It is a very simple function, the date function. We put a year, we put a month, but then we use sequence to put a bunch of days in here. And then sequence is going to cause the date function to spill that out into these cells below it. There's nothing here. You can freeze it like I showed you to a moment ago, but there's nothing here. So let's go ahead. I will move this guy over. And let's build a new date right here. So equals date, what year, put in your year, put it in however you want to. You could use the year function. We'll do that in a moment. Month, let's go with one. Now sequence. Now we're going to use sequence to create a simple single array of values that the date function can use. How many days do I want to output? Let's go with five for now. Close it up, close it up, hit enter. And you're going to get something like this where we have a date here and just these numbers down here. If you're not familiar with dates, don't worry. This is how Excel sees dates with these funky numbers. So just select them, go to the home tab, down here and choose a date. Let's go with short date. And there you go. These values are still just spilled down here, so they're empty. So the dynamic array and spill feature are pretty neat like that. Now, if I go here, let us hit F9 to calculate that. One, two, three, four, five. So that's all we're doing. We're basically running the date function five times across five cells or spilling it down into five cells with one as the day value, then two, then three, then four, then five. And even though the date function itself is an old function, it's not a function made for dynamic arrays or spilling or any of that, the sequence function will cause it to spill down. So we're using the sequence function to make old functions much more powerful. 
And since we're in the newer versions of Excel, we don't have to hit Control Shift Enter. We just hit Enter regularly and it saves everything. Now I hit Escape there, just so you know. When you calculate something with F9, you do need to hit Escape. If you hit Enter, it'll save it directly like that. Just a little tip, so let's back that up. Make sure it is good. It is good. So that's how you can use the sequence as a helper function to make other functions significantly more powerful. And you don't have to just leave it at five. So let's say we wanted to go to start, and let's say we wanted to start at day 10, and we wanted to step up by two. And let us say that we're going to do this three times, so three rows. So now, if we calculate sequence right here, we will get 10, 12, and 14. So I'm going to hit Control Z to leave that in, then Enter. And there we go, January 10th, 12th, and 14th. I'll give this a nice title, Date 2.0. Now let's go ahead and do another date thing before we get back to incrementing difficult values. Dates with formatting. This down here is just to expand upon what I just taught you, but show you how it can look a little bit complex, a little bit scary even. Here we're going to create months that go across columns like this, and we're going to have it already formatted. So here is the big scary formula, but it's not scary. The text function is what does the formatting. This date in here, right here, is what creates the date. For the date function, we have a year. Now, how do we get the year here? This is done in just sort of a way that looks confusing, but it really isn't. We get the current date and using today, and then we use the year function to get the year from that. You could hard code this value in here, just like we did in the previous example. It would be the same thing, except for it wouldn't update every year. Now, we just change the month here. So for this one, we're saying for the sequence that we want to have one row, but six columns. Since we don't input a start or a step, it will increment it by one each time. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So when I select this and hit F9, one, two, three, four, five, six. And notice the commas between the numbers here instead of the semicolons that we previously saw when it was for rows. So Control Z to back that up. And for the day, we're just going with the first day of the month. Then, once we get out here, we're just back in the text function. And this allows you to format the output so that we don't have to go to the Home tab and deal with the formatting. So it's a simple thing that is made to look complex because it requires one, two, three, four, five functions. But it's really not that complex. And that's what gets us this. Notice these are still empty. It just spilled to the right this time. And let me just show you back to back right here, F9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 with the commas. See the commas there? Now let's take a look at it up here. Sequence right here, F9, semicolons. So rows versus columns. And if I went back to basic, we could zoom in go up to our table and do the same thing here, F9, and we get tons of values. You're going to see a bunch of commas and then eventually a semicolon, commas, semicolon. So that's how the array distinguishes between rows and columns. It's not too important for this, but it's kind of interesting to know how that works so that you can tell the difference if you see it within a formula. All right, let us go back to incrementing difficult values. If you have something that you can't just increment by typing in and using the quick fill handle, like this, ASC, or let's change it a little bit so it doesn't try to auto guess, say ABC-1-B, and then you go ABC-2-B. If I typed in exactly these, it would try to fill in the same list right here because I just filled this list in. That's what I meant by guessing. But now if I do this and pull the quick fill handle down, it just does that. It's not what we want. So what we want to do is to use sequence to increment the number while keeping everything else the same. And it's going to automatically spill it down for us. So let's go over here 
and let's do that. We're going to use some concatenation for this. ASC dash, because that's not going to change. Now I'm going to input an ampersand. I want to concatenate it with something. I want to concatenate it with a sequence. So I'll pop in the sequence. How many rows would I like? Let's go with 10. I don't need to input anything else because it increments how I want it to, but change it as you need to, as we've done in the previous examples. Now that we have sequence in there, let's go ahead and fill out the end. And what we want there is dash B. Of course, you could add other functions, other formulas to make this even more complex. But now that I've input this single formula, watch what happens when I hit enter. It automatically fills in for us. And I could select all of this just by hitting control A and then control C, alt ESV for copy paste special values. And then you'll have some frozen values that you can use however you want. So essentially, the more that you combine sequence with other things, the more useful sequence will become and the more powerful your other formulas will become. So it can be used as a very useful building block function. And that's where it really shines in Excel. Now, there are many, many more sequence examples that I could do, including a lot of examples with tables, getting the largest values, smallest values, doing a lot of really cool things. And I talk all about that in the premium course on teachexcel.com. So check the link in the description if you want more info on that. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.